It's time for Monday Night Baseball at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. Game one of a three-game interleague series. It's the Texas Rangers taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. And we welcome you to Rangers baseball on a beautiful Monday night here at Dodger Stadium and on Fox Sports Net. Bill Jones along with Tom Grieve. A very devastating loss for the Rangers last night as Orlando Merced had a three-run home run in the ninth inning to win it for the Astros. But the Rangers and Dodgers, they rely on the long ball too. Tom? Well, they can both score runs. There's no doubt about that. And they have similar ways of scoring. The Rangers have had 45% of their runs score on home runs. The Dodgers just a little bit behind behind them at 44 percent. The Rangers are fourth in the major league with that percentage. The Dodgers are sixth. They've got individual players in the leaderboard, on the leaderboard in home runs, but they don't string together rallies very well. They depend on the long ball. Not many three run innings with five singles, a double, and a couple of stolen bases. They do it pretty much by the home run. Well, it's been a disappointing season for the Rangers so far. On the other hand, the Los Angeles Dodgers, despite losing two out of three to the Angels over the weekend, in second place in the National League West. Well, they're hanging in there. They're five games over 500. They score a lot of runs on the home run, but they've also got good pitching. They've got a 394 team ERA. They've got an excellent closure, closer in Jeff Shaw. He's tied for the National League lead with 18 saves. They've had some injuries to their rotation. Two key guys Guys, Ashby and Brown. Eric Karras is out of the lineup. He's one of their best RBI guys, but they've hung in there, and they're not only in the pennant race, they're just a game behind Atlanta in the wild card race. But the Dodgers have been plagued by some injuries. Rangers won't see some of the top guys in their starting rotation, but Luke Prokopek on the mound for the Dodgers. Rafael Palmero, just about every, no one has hit as many home runs in interleague play as Rafi. Darren Oliver gets to hit as well as pitch tonight. The lineups and first pitch when we come back. It's game number 62 of the 2001 season for the Texas Rangers. Their first game this season in a National League ballpark. We are at Dodgers Stadium in Los Angeles. Darren Oliver taking his warm-up tosses down in the Ranger bullpen as Darren Oliver and the Rangers take on Luke Prokopek and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Great night for baseball, and Darren Oliver, Tom, is coming off a very nice start. Well, there's no doubt that that start was his best start of the season. He had every pitch working for him better than at any any time during the season. He had good velocity on his fastball with good control. He threw some really good sliders, some good changeups, and the results against a very good team were impressive. Seven innings and only one run. He got the loss in that game. He left behind one to nothing. It's kind of ironic that he would pitch that well and get a loss when you look back to earlier in the season and how many runs he had in support of him. So Darren Oliver will be on the mound for Texas. This is a Ranger team that leads the majors in home runs, whether it be at home or on the road. 51 home runs for the Rangers in road games. The ball has been flying out of Dodger Stadium this year. The Dodgers on the road have 44 home runs. The Dodgers have played very well this season right here at Dodger Stadium. Rafael Palmero among the league leaders in interleague home runs. It's the Rangers and the Dodgers, and we'll have the lineups in first pitch for you when we come back on Fox Sports Net. Chavez Ravine, the site for Ranger baseball tonight. It's the Rangers and Los Angeles Dodgers. Game one of a three-game series in the Southwest Airlines lineup for Texas. Looks this way. Rusty Greer leads off in left field, followed by the catcher, Ivan Rodriguez. His last three games, four home runs for Pudge. A-Rod hits third at short. Rafi is the cleanup man at first base. Ken Caminetti hits fifth at third. Frank Catalanato bats sixth and right. Bo Porter gets the start in center field as Gabe Kapler is ailing. And Michael Young gets the start at second base. He hits eighth, and of course, the pitcher hits in the National League Park. Darren Oliver with a career batting average of 226. Luke Prokopek from Australia, the starter for the Dodgers. Rangers are going to get a chance to see another outstanding young right handed pitcher. They saw Oswalt Miller from Houston, two good young pitchers. And Prokopek is a good young pitcher in his own right. He's got an excellent fastball up to 94 miles an hour. He'll also throw a fastball that sinks. He has a good changeup, and he's off to an excellent start. Six and two with an ERA under four. And one thing you like about these young pitchers is they've all got excellent control. He has only 11 walks and six and two in. So Krokopek on the mound around the horn defensively. Paul Loduca is the first baseman for the Dodgers. Mark Gresselonic is the second baseman. And on the left side, it's Adrian Beltre at third. And the shortstop is Jeff Rebele tonight. In the outfield, 
Gary Sheffield back from the disabled list a few days ago in left field. Marquise Grissom is in center field. Power hitter, great defensive player as well. Sean Green in right with the former Ranger Chad Kruder behind the plate catching. And it is Luke Prokopek on the mound. We want to welcome those of you watching in South Australia. That's where Luke Prokopek is from in Fox Sports Australia, picking up our feed tonight. Six and two record for Prokopek on the season. Nice earned run average, too. He lost his last start to Arizona. That broke a three game winning streak. In six of his 10 starts, he has not walked the batter. He's only 23 years old. He's only had a couple of full minor league seasons, parts of two others. In 1998, he was the Dodger minor league pitcher of the year. This is a nice find for the Dodgers. A lot of times you read the Dodgers might be interested in making a trade for some veteran player. Usually the player that's mentioned is this kid, and the Dodgers have no interest in trading him. They like what they've seen from him. Particularly nice find when you consider he was first an outfielder in the Dodger organization before switching over to pitcher. Rusty Greer leads it off for Texas. Greer, Rodriguez, and Rodriguez in the first inning. Rusty at 270 with the average, and the first pitch from Prokopek is called strike one. Seven overs, 29 RBIs for Rusty as he tries to get the Rangers going here in the first inning. It's down low, one and one to Greer. The Rangers appeared to be on the verge of victory last night at the ballpark against the Astros. Heartbreaking loss, two balls and one strike, as Orlando Merced hit the home run in the ninth inning to win it for the Astros, six to five. There's the 2 1 pitch, and it's inside, three balls and one strike. Rockapec, just 23 years of age, makes his home in Renmark, South Australia, born in Blackwood, South Australia. Fair headed for the corner. Rusty with extra bases. And it's a leadoff double for Greer, his 23rd double of the season. Prokopek fell behind. He needed to come in with a fastball, which he did. And Rusty in that situation looking for the fastball. He got the two seam fastball that stayed up pretty straight. And he rips it by Laduca down the right field line. The doubles leaders in the American League as Rusty is seven behind Mike Sweeney. Sweeney's got 30 doubles already. Here's Pudge. Ninth inning home run last night for Rodriguez. His 12th of the season now with 30 RBIs. Rangers with a man in scoring position early. This one's hit high and it is hit deep to right field. Sean Green back in front of the wall has room. Tagging and moving to third is Rusty, but Pudge making a bid for a home run in a fourth straight game, which would tie the Ranger Club record. It's hard, to, hard to imagine that you could Stop almost hit Alex. that pitch out of the ballpark. This is a good pitch, down and away. Probably down further and away further than Chad Kruder even had his target. Yet Pudge is able to drive it right to the top of the wall in right field. John Green goes up and makes the play. You gotta have some power to hit that pitch that far. I don't think that pitch was even a strike. He gave it a long ride to right field. Green had room. Here's A Rod hitting 332 now, 19 homers, 54 runs batted in. Has an RBI opportunity here with a man at third and one out. There's a strike 0 and 1. With a runner on third in less than two outs. He's come through half the time with a home run and 13 RBIs. Rusty a double and went to third on the deep fly ball. This one's down the line and left. A foul ball. Just foul. Three thirty down the line. It's a short fence down that line in left field. Well, 
was a line shot too. He got that fastball up and in and really turned on it. Rockefeller's going to need to mix in a breaking ball here because the Rangers are right on his fastball right now. Here's the 0-2 pitch. High and tight, one and two. Alex, a rude greeting from the fans as his name was announced as he came to the plate here. Not Seattle-like by any means. Seems like he's got a ruder reception on the West Coast than East Coast. RBI leaders on the road. Alex with 33 of his 54 coming in road games. Went off three straight games against the Astros, in which he had. Two hits in each of those games. Lays off that one. That's two balls and two strikes. It's that good hard slider that Prokopek throws, 84 miles an hour. Almost like a cut fastball. Good velocity. Sharp breaking slider that breaks three or four inches. Just enough to make the hitter hit the ball off the bad part of the bat. Just missed the outside corner with that one. Now the 2 2. That, what's that? It's time called by Alex or home plate umpire Andy Fletcher. Apparently Alex must have called time. Alex acts like he's calling time. Yep. He stepped like is. that. It wasn't acknowledged by the home plate umpire I don't believe until Prokopek. It was acknowledged by Prokopek though. It sure was. <laughs> Which would have been a balk. Slider, but he missed with it. Good eye by A Rod. Watch Cruder's glove. He's going to have to go down and out, which is a pretty good indication that that's a ball. Most of the time, for that type of a pitch, the catcher will put his glove right on the outside corner. So if you have to move it, it stands to reason it's a little bit outside. Off the end of the bat to first base. That is a fair ball. That will get the run home. So Alex has been successful seven out of 13 times getting the runner home from third base and it's a one nothing lead for Texas. RBI number 55 for Alex. Prokopek made a good pitch. A right a little tapper toward Rafael. first base. I guess if you're going to hit that Palmer. ball and make that kind of an out take some of the sting out of being 0 for 1. If there's a man on third base and you end up with an RBI and put your team ahead one to nothing. Double long fly ball and a little ground ball and the Rangers strike first. Here's Rafi, nobody on, two outs now, a swing and a miss. Now tip 0 and 1. Palmero with 15 homers and 48 runs batted in. The average is at 250 for Rafi. Rangers break through with a run here in the first inning. Pocapex ahead 0 2 on Palmero. One ball and two strikes. Rangers had a late scratch in the lineup just prior to game time. Gabe Kapler is, inj is not injured but sick. He has flu like symptoms. He's been hitting fifth, his usual spot behind Palmero. He's in tight two and two. So Ken Caminetti moves up in the lineup to the fifth hole, trying, hoping to get an opportunity here in the first. Two balls and two strikes. Just came in on deck. This one's hit to left center field. It is hit deep. Way back. And that ball is out of here. Rafael Palmero continues what he has done so many times in interleague play. A round tripper, a 2 0 lead. Rafi got a fastball up, probably on the outside corner. That ball jumped off his bat to left center field. A line shot. Number 11, 90, 400 feet away. Ken 
Caminetti. See Cruder's glove. This is going to be a little higher than that glove. On the outside corner, not a terrible pitch, but it's a better pitch if it's about eight inches lower than that. The Ranger hitters have excellent power the other way. You look at Pudge Rodriguez, A Rod, Palmero. These guys not only can pull a home run, they can drive it the other way. So if you're going to hit the outside corner, you want to keep it down. That one was up just a little bit. Again, not a bad pitch, but that's a great hitter you're pitching to. And great hitters can hit good pitches. Strike Caminetti. Rafael, second time that he has hit one to the opposite field, hit one in Seattle. Two of his last three have now gone to the opposite field this year. This is the second time he's hit one to left center or left field this year. Jerry Naren was talking about Palmero. He thought it was a good sign when he hit his home run to left field a week or so ago in Seattle. Swing and a miss. Foul tip held on to by Cruder. That'll do it for the Rangers in the first. They get a couple across, a double and a homer. Palmero got the team's 99th home run of the year. the first inning at Dodger Stadium Rangers get a couple across in their half of the inning on a couple of hits in the Southwest Airlines lineup for the Dodgers looks this way Paul Laduca the first baseman leads off followed by the second baseman Mark Bresolonic who has a 12 game hit streak and hitting well with runners in scoring position all year Sean Green in right Gary Sheffield in left Adrian Beltre bats fifth and third it's Marquise Grissom hitting sixth and center in the bottom third Jeff Rebele the shortstop Chad Kruder the catcher Luke Prokopek the pitcher and on the mound for Texas is Darren Oliver. Darren Oliver will be making his ninth start, his second start since coming off the disabled list. His last start was his best start. He lost at Seattle, but he pitched seven innings, five hits, only one run. He was hitting the thumb and caused his trip to the disabled list. That feels fine now. And hopefully Darren will be able to come right back and pitch the same type of a game tonight that he did in Seattle. If he does, he'll have success. Paul Loduca also plays catcher. He's playing first base tonight. Eric Karos on the disabled list. High strike, one ball, one strike. Loduca hitting over 300. Had a six hit game recently. Six homers and 19 RBIs. Two balls and one strike to Laduca. Andy Fletcher behind the plate calling balls and strikes with Gildan Colbert at first, Dale Scott at second, and Larry Young at third. Here's the 2 1. Back up the middle, it will fall in front of Bo Porter in center field, and the Dodgers have their leadoff man on in the first. Around the horn defensively for Texas, it's Palmero at first. Second baseman from the L.A. area, Michael Young, playing in front of the home folks. Ken Caminetti's at third. A Rod, the shortstop. And in the outfield, Sun Field for Rusty tonight here. Bo Porter in center field. And in right field is Frank Catalanato. Pudge, the Gold Glover behind the plate. It's Gressalonic with a man on, nobody out here in the first. Fouled at the plate, 0 and 1. Oliver on the season is looking for his fifth win. The high earned run average got plenty of run support back in April when he ran off those four victories. As Tom mentioned, his last start was his best one, going seven innings, giving up one run on five hits against. The Seattle lineup that's been doing some damage against everybody this year. Oliver's given up 52 hits in 36 innings. Some good numbers for Gressalonic, not only at the plate, but in the field this year. Slowly hit left side, Caminetti to Young. The relay to first is in time for the double play. Strong throw by Young to double up Gressalonic. 
A nice play by the Ranger infield and a good pitch by Darren Oliver after LaDuca single. At the inning started, Darren induced a slow hopper to Caminetti. Caminetti Three. turns it. The pitch from pitch from Darren's a good breaking ball, good curveball, jammed to Grizzolanic. Caminetti on the run, perfect feed, and a good quick hard throw from Michael Young to Rafi completes the double play. High and tight to Sean Green. That leadoff single is erased here in the bottom of the first. Rangers tied for second in the American League. Double plays turn. It's now seven. This one is turned on by Sean Green. We talked long ball at the outset of this game, and in the first inning, Palmero for Texas, Green for Los Angeles have gone deep. Sean, Sean Green got a pitch up and on the inside part of the plate. There is no doubt about that one. That's halfway up in the bleachers, straight away right field. That was gone the minute. You hit the bat, you can tell by the sound off the bat. Gary Sheffield. It's a high belt, high fastball, and Sean Green is ready for it. A little bit on the inside half of the plate. He puts his head down, doesn't even have to watch it. He knows that one's good. And a souvenir, the Sean Green home run hitting batting glove. Say he looks pretty happy with that. Gary Sheffield takes a strike. One ball, one strike. Number 17 for Sean Green, RBI 53. Former Toronto Blue Jay, in his second year with the Dodgers. And it's a 2 1 game in the first. Sheffield pops it up left side of the infield. Eminetti on the grass has it. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the first inning. But Sean Green goes deep and cuts the Ranger lead in half through one. From Johnny Maroney's Sausage Kingdom. Well, through one inning here at Dodger Stadium, a home run for each team. Sean Green for the Dodgers goes deep for the 17th time this season. The Dodgers are with 81 home runs as a team. And the Rangers have 99 home runs as a team as Rafael Palmero. The home run for Texas in the first inning. We go to the second now, and it'll be the six, seven, and eight hitters coming up for the Rangers. Frank Catalanato will lead it off to be followed by Bo Porter and Michael Young. Catalanato hit the ninth spot in the order last night, was hitless, but had a four hit game on Saturday. It's the first time this season he hit. Last in the batting order, he's in a more customary spot tonight, number six hole. Here's the 1 0 to Catalanato. It's just called strike one and one. It's two and one. Catalanato played second base last night. Position he played. Early on in his career, but this year he's been playing a lot in right field here in the last month. That's where he is tonight. It's a base hit for Catalanato. With a wide turn at first, he'll hold on with a leadoff single. Third hit for the Rangers off Prokopak. Center fielder number 16, Bo Porter. Peck gives up the leadoff single, and now here is Bo Porter, the late insertion into the lineup in center field when Abe Kapler could not go due to flu like symptoms. Porter season numbers at the big league level, a 278 average. There goes Catalanato, and a liner to third base. It is caught by the third baseman, Beltre, in the easy double play completed. Two down. It's too bad. Bo Porter, his first at bat and first pitch, it's a bullet. Unfortunately, it's right straight at the third baseman. Nothing Second Catalanato baseman. could do as he was running on the pitch. And one pitch, quick double Number play. Two, Mike Young. Ankle high, right off the turf. He caught it. And then the easy double play. 
Weaver's first at bat since being recalled from Triple A Oklahoma. Mike Young, the hitter, 1 0. Side. Bobby Jones, the third base coach. One and one to Young. Michael had Sunday night off, but he's appeared in 14 of 15 games now since being called up from Oklahoma. Two and one to Young. Young's done a nice job in the field. And he has hit well in the minor leagues. He's off to a slow start at the big league level his first couple of weeks here in the majors. And I just feel that a hitting will come around for him. This one is hit high and it is hit deep to left center field. Looking up, the left fielder Sheffield leaping for it, and that ball is out of here. The first major league home run for Michael Young. The hitting is coming around for Young. Michael hit that ball a lot like he hit the ball in Seattle. A high fast ball he got underneath it hit it sky high only this one went far enough. This one got about five feet over Pitchers the wall. The other one Stan Javier went up and took right off the All top over. of the wall but this is a belt high fast ball. He gets underneath it. Brackepec points up in the air as if to say it's a high fly someone's going to catch it but it went a little bit too far. Well, what a special place for Michael Young to hit his first major league home run. Lots of family and friends here. He grew up in Los Angeles, went to Bishop Ahmad High School, a 1994 graduate, and Mike Young has his first major league home run in his first major league at bat back home in Los Angeles. I was in the clubhouse when Chris Lingus was filling out the pass list, and I happened to glance down at the pass list, and there's at least 29 people here. Under Mike Young's name. I'm not <laughs> sure if there's more than that. So at least 29 people are here to see it. What a thrill. There's tears in the stands of joy. That's right. This one's hit deep to right field off the bat of Darren Oliver, the Ranger pitcher, over the head of Sean Green. It is a ground rule double. The first at bat for a Ranger pitcher this year. And Darren Oliver, a career 226 hitter, almost hit it out. He did hit it out. He hit it out on a bounce, though. Darren's a good hitter. And it's not surprising that he hits the ball well. And if you're the pitcher, and I guess you probably wouldn't have much of a scouting report on Darren Oliver, but I would say the first pitch should be something down in the strike zone, maybe a breaking ball, because he's going to go up there and rip it the first thing he sees. Your attention, please, for the Texas Darren Rangers. Oliver, the son of a big league hitter, Bob Oliver. Catching his Number breath at second base now. Ruben. See Pat Sierra. Mahomes. Pat Mahomes is telling everybody that's nothing. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> he was before the game. He was bragging about what kind of a hitter he was. He's got a 313 average, he says, and Darren's average is just a little bit above 200. Well, his average is inflated apparently. And the, it must be the Pat Mahomes. As this is uh, Ruben Sierra hitting for Rusty now. You know, I'm afraid that flu bug might be going around the clubhouse because Doug Davis did the interview with us before the game and before the interview he said if I don't sound good I'm sick as a dog. Gabe Kapler's out of the lineup. I didn't see Rusty do anything that would indicate a muscle pull or anything like that. Had a double in his first at bat. He may have the flu. And Sierra pops it up. The second baseman Gresselanic back on the outfield grass as Sierra apparently will stay in the game in left field. As Rusty is out of the lineup, so is Gabe, but Michael Young is first big league homer. The official breakfast cereal of Major League Baseball. Well, well 3 1, Texas leads Los Angeles. Already three home runs hit in this game, including Michael Young's first Major League homer in front of the home folks here in Los Angeles, Rafael Palmero. With a home run as well, his 416th career home run, number 16 on this season. A 3 1 lead for Texas over Los Angeles as the Dodgers will have the five, six, and seven hitters coming up. 
Well, on the field, they're invincible, but off the field, they're all too human. Fox Sports takes a look at the athletes you thought you knew this week. Sean Elliott appeared to have it all until a mysterious illness tested his will to survive and revealed his true courage. Find out about the Sean Elliott you never knew as Beyond the Glory takes you inside the hidden world of sports' biggest stars. Beyond the Glory, tomorrow at 9, right here on Fox Sports Net. Here's Adrian Beltre to face Darren Oliver in a high strike call. 0-1, Beltre, Grissom, and Rebele for the Dodgers in the second. Beltre missed the first month of the season. Last month he's hitting around 230. This one's hit high in the air, down on the line. Long run for Ruben Sierra. Sierra stayed in the game and is playing in right field, and he makes the play. Had to go a long way for it. Sierra in right and Frank Catalanato moves over to left field. Rusty Greer left the game not with the flu bug. Instead, it's a strained left hamstring for Rusty. Center fielder number nine. It's not serious. Must have done on the double. Rest to see it happen. He ended up moving over to third on a fly ball, scored on a ground ball. So at some point in time, running the bases, that must have occurred. Yeah, because there were no balls hit out to left field during the first inning. Rusty fielded. Marquise Grissom, the hitter. Out straight back, going one. Rangers have had some injury problems with the outfield in the first couple of months of the season. Gabe Kapler missed the first month with a quad injury. Swing and a miss. Big swing by Grissom. Ricky Lede has been on the disabled list. All season and Lede is getting much closer to returning from the disabled list. So if Rusty and Randy Velarde right there is on the disabled list right now with a hamstring injury, the second baseman. If Rusty's injury is serious enough to put him on the DL, Ricky Lede is close to coming back. He went three for three last night and played left field for Triple A Oklahoma. Game plan right now is that Lede might be activated this weekend in Houston. Without regard to injuries suffered by Rusty here. Maybe it's not that serious. Two balls, two strikes to Grissom. Like a broken bat, little blooper in left center field, and A Rod can't come up with it. It's a bloop single for Marquise Grissom. Okay, Leonardo, without much outfield experience, now playing left field. Was fooled by that ball a little bit. He didn't get a great Jeff jump. That's one of those full cool swings, not off the good part of the bat. Rubber little line. bloopers. A Rod had to go a long way, but he got to the ball. Just could not make the over the shoulder catch. He's going to make contact with it, just couldn't catch it. it. Would have been a nice play, but certainly that ball was catchable. He just was unable to corral it. So man on, a one out. Jeff Rebele, the hitter, and Oliver's got Grissom picked. Aaron will apply the tag. One, three, six. That's the third pickoff for a Ranger pitcher in the last two games. And that's how you run a rundown play. That's one thing the Rangers weren't doing early in the year. As Grissom gets caught in his rundown, Aaron, instead of waiting at second base, he comes running right toward the runner. Rafi delivers the ball right at the right time, and then it's an easy tag. That's what you have to do is close the distance between the fielder and the runner. Did it perfectly that time. It was always a nice, quick, crisp rundown. See if we can get a look at it. Grissom is napping, but you can see A-Rod breaking toward Grissom. A lot of times that fielder will just stay back at second base and get the ball and give the runner a chance to continue to maneuver. It's not that big a deal, but that's the only runner. It becomes a bigger deal when there's a man on third base or a man on second base who's trying to move over to third base. Run down is prolonged and the other runner can move up. That's what you don't want to see. The quicker you make the tag, the less chance any other runner can move up. Jeff Rebele, you started shortstop, two outs, nobody on here. Doug Davis last night picked off Astro outfielder Glenn Barker a couple of times in the game. Off here in the second inning tonight. Play with a foul ball. This 
Doug Davis not feeling well but he pitched well last night eight innings three runs six hits only one walk and six strikeouts a hard luck no decision for Doug Davis though he's in position to win it but Orlando Merced had other ideas Round ball hit to short a rod fires across Palmero with a tag applied on Rebele coming down Rebele may be injured that'll do it for the second inning for the Dodgers 3-1. Texas leads Los Angeles. We are through two innings here at Dodger Stadium. Talked about the flu bug going around. It's contagious. Rusty Greer had a hamstring injury and to leave the game. Jeff Rebele trying to beat out the grounder. Rebele comes up hobbling a little bit. He made the last out of the second inning. It looks like Rebele is going to come out of the game now. It looked like he hurt that when he swung his bat. I wonder if that's one of those rib cage injuries. They're dropping like flies, though. Boy, it it's is contagious. Like Gabe Kapler was a scratch with the Sora. flu bug, and then Rusty Greer leaves after the first inning with a strained left hamstring. Now, Alex Cora will go in at shortstop for Rebelais, as Rebelais leaves with an injury of some kind. In between innings, Rebelais. Headed towards his shortstop position, but then the Dodger trainer came out, and the decision has been made for him to come out of the game. Well, it's Pudge Rodriguez to lead it off for the Rangers here in the third. Ball one from Luke Prokopek. Pudge, A Rod, and Rafi for the Rangers here in the third inning. Pudge gave it a ride the opposite way. First pitch he saw from Prokopak in the first inning. Could not hit it out. Catching the outside corner, one ball and one strike. Pudge has four home runs in his last three games. Had a two home run game on Saturday night, including a grand slam. In the ninth inning last night, he hit a home run. And the home runs have gone to all fields right field, center field, left field. Two to Pudge. Earlier this year, Rodriguez tied the Ranger Club record with home runs in four straight games. That came April 20th through the 24th. He has a chance to do it again tonight if he hits one out. Upstairs, he went around. Strike three, and there is one out in the third. Crocker Peck came after him with his 90 plus fastball. Pitch a pitch up out of the strike zone to see if he can get Pudge to up for you. See Cruder's glove way up at the strike zone. Normally a catcher doesn't give the target that high if that's not what you're trying to do. And they were successful. Pudge was unable to lay off. But one thing Dodger Stadium has, they have the best dressed radar gun man in the business. They certainly do. Right behind home plate. I'm going to use my telestrator too. There he is, right there. Mike Brito. That man can handle the radar gun with anybody. Nobody does it better than Mike Brito. With the familiar hat on. He has discovered some players through the course of time, too. Sure has. Most notably, 20 years ago, named Fernando Val Valenzuela. It was 20 years ago in Valenzuela in 1981 made his Dodger debut. He likes that area right behind home plate. That's about the best vantage point you can have for a radar gun. But there's one negative for Mike. It's a non-smoking area. <laughs> he's a big cigar smoker. And you can't turn down that location. Has it all to himself there, right? Because he's standing up right in front of some of the handicap sections, so he's probably got a few people upset with him. I think they may be a little bit higher. The section might be can a little see bit over. I think maybe they can. I hope so. It's a great section down there, right behind home plate, though. It's the high rent district. It's probably why Mike feels he needs to wear a suit like that. Just to fit in in that high rent district. 
be a few Hollywood stars down there tonight. I understand Don Rickles was here the other night. <laughs> you never know who you might run across here at Dodger Stadium. Jerry Seinfeld was at the ballpark the other day. At least we had him up on the oh, scoreboard. Right. <laughs> he had a Mets at our ballpark. It looked a lot like Shea Stadium, but. <laughs> Into shallow left, and Gary Sheffield has it. That was a old Chuck Morgan trick, I believe. <laughs> it works pretty good. He, Jerry First actually goes good. to a lot of Met games. Number 25, and Chuck Morgan, and our diamond will put that picture up Palmera. there. center field just got out home run number 16 high strike one ball one strike He throws on to LaDuca. One, two, three, go the Rangers in the third inning. Texas up by a couple. Dodger Stadium. Los Angeles, California, the site for Ranger baseball. Tom, there's a face in the crowd. Evidently, that is Mary Hart. Yes, Mary Hart. Entertainment, Entertainment tonight. tonight. Right behind her is Super Agent Scott Boris. Another star in the stands tonight. There's Scott. There's Scott Morris, Alex Rodriguez agent. Oh, representing Mark Teixeira. Top draft pick, advisor to Teixeira. Also watching a client on the mound, Darren Oliver. Chad Kruder, Luke Prokopek, and Paul LaDuca for the Dodgers here in the third inning against Oliver. Two balls and one strike to Kruder. To Oliver was touched with a home run in the first inning by Sean Green. If he can settle down and pitch like he did at Safeco Field last week. In last week's start for Oliver against the Mariners, he went seven innings, and the lone run he gave up was a first inning home run by Edgar Martinez, the number three hitter in the lineup for the Mariners. So a similarity here is he gave up the first inning home run to Green. June 7 for 17 hitting over 400 this month with a lot of walks. He has reached base in nine straight games. This one's hit deep to center field. Bo Porter running out of room. It's off the wall. Bounces beyond Porter. Kruder will hold on at second base. It's a leadoff double for Chad Kruder. It's a pitch up and out over the pitchers plate. That pitch is hit hard in this ball game. Pitchers have gotten back. their fastball, both pitchers, several times, belt high and out over the plate. And the hitters have taken advantage and pounded that pitch pretty well. Chad just missed a home run with that one. Line shot to the gap. Bo gave it a good run, but couldn't get there. Situation right here. Rafi's way in at first. Caminiti in at third. 
Caminiti will not charge, though. He'll go back and cover third unless he has to field the ball. He kind of holds his ground and hopes that Darren Oliver can get to the ball, in which case he'll go back and cover third and hope that Darren can get it to him to keep Cruz from getting to third. If the ball is bunted hard to him, then he has no other choice but to come in, field the ball, throw to first. And then the runner goes over to third base pretty easy on the sacrifice. Pocketpack, a former outfielder. Lays down the bunt. Oliver will go to first. The sacrifice executed by Pocketpack. Kruder at third with one out. Darren fielded it, and Caminetti went back to third, but it was such a good bunt that there was no play at third base. He had to get rid of the ball fairly quick. First base, man. Because Pocketpack was hustling to first base. Nice bunt. He squared around. And really concentrated on getting that bunt down. Pitchers can help themselves immensely if they're able to do those fundamental things like getting the bunt down. Pocket Peck now has three sacrifice bunts on the season, which is tied for the Dodger team lead with Darren Dreifert, who's a good hitting pitcher. At the top of the order, Paul LaDuca will come up with a man at third and one out. Duca hitting 325 on the year. It's 1 0 to the Dodger first baseman tonight. He's hitting well over 400 runners in scoring position this year. He's 10 for 22. Maduka getting an opportunity at first base because Eric Peros is on the disabled list with a sprained lower back. Went on the disabled list on May 24th. Maduka is a fairly unlikely leadoff hitter, a catcher, first baseman. He really doesn't walk all that much. He was hitting for a good enough average to where he's getting a chance to lead off. Real deep in left field. Kruder's headed for the plate. Catalanato with the throw to sacrifice fly for Paul LaDuca, and the lead kept to one. Second baseman, number eight, Mark Razzolotti. Two away and a run in. Well, Kruder led off with a double. Paka Peck moved him over with a sacrifice bunt. And Laduka did his job by getting the fly ball deep enough to get him in. Resolonic with nobody on, two outs. Resolonic rounded into a double play. His first time, Lowe's improvement note, Lowe's home improvement. Lowe's home improvement. No, Mark Gresolani. Down low. One and two to Gresolani. Strike three called. Oliver gets the strikeout to end the third inning. Number 11, third baseman. Oh, we've got a good one going here at Dodger Stadium in L.A. It's the Rangers and the Dodgers. And Darren Oliver's team leads it three to two. 
Oliver gives up a run in the, thir in the first and the third. Next Tuesday through Thursday, the Rangers take on the Anaheim Angels at the ballpark. And on Wednesday, June 20th, one week from this Wednesday, the first 15,000 kids, 15 and under, receive the first of three comic books, compliments of North Texas Hospital for Children at Medical City. For information, call 817-273-5100. That'll be when the Rangers return to American League action. It's interleague play this week. Rangers will be playing in National League parks throughout the week. Dodger Stadium for these three games and then on to Enron Field in Houston Friday night, Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. Strike one to Caminetti to be followed by Catalanato and Porter. Here in the fourth inning. Caminetti sends it high and pretty deep to left center field. Grissom is there. Not quite to the track. And there is one out here in the fourth inning. Apparently it is a hamstring injury, Tom, that is Frank contagious around here. Jeff Rebele left with a sore left hamstring, and that's why Rusty Greer left the game early. A strained left hamstring for Greer. That makes me 0 for 2 on injury assessment speculation. Yeah, the rib cage. I had the rib cage on Rebel A. I had the flu on Rusty Greer. <laughs> and hopefully, no one else will leave the game prematurely. So you won't have another chance to go 0 for 3. I well, will take a shot at it. 0 and 2 to Catalanato. Catalanato had a single his first time. Seeing his first action in left field now after Rusty left. First action of his career in left field. It's, uh, when he has played in the outfield, it's been only in right field so far. Here's the one two pitch. And it's two balls and two strikes. Shortstop. Catalanato has his second straight single. Center fielder, number 16, Bo Porter. That was a nice attempt by Cora, but if he catches that ball, all he's going to do is be able to get up, toss it back to the pitcher. Anyway. Plays. The dive looks good, but doesn't have much function. Here's Bo Porter, who lined to third. It turned out to be a double play as Catalanato was going on the first pitch to Porter last time, not going this time. It's ball one. Porter started the year with the Rangers as a reserve outfielder, a 270 average, and was sent down last month. Hitting just 221 at AAA Oklahoma, but had been hitting the ball better in the last week before being called up. He was called up after the game Saturday night, the announcement made. Got into last night's game as a defensive replacement late. And Rangers call up Porter just in time because Gabe Kapler, the late scratch. Really, the only center fielder on the roster before Porter was called up. The Brumbaugh, who played some in right field, was sent down to the minor leagues. And Porter has a base hit here. Two straight singles. And the home run hitter coming up. Second baseman. Both swinging Number that well. His return to the lineup. Return to the big leagues. Did not spend a lot of time in the lineup while he was here. He was mostly as a pinch runner or a defensive replacement. Chad Curtis and Bo Porter were battling for time. Chad pretty much won that battle with his great play early in the season before he was injured. We don't talk about Chad. We haven't seen him around that much, but the Rangers missed Chad. He was playing some excellent baseball all the way around. Offensively, defensively, he was a real offensive catalyst for the Rangers. Mike Young has a second straight hit. 
Headed to the plate, Catalanato. The throw is cut. Second RBI for Michael Young tonight. Rangers lead it 4-2. He loves playing back home at Dodger Stadium, apparently. Well, he's feeling good. He's aggressive, and he's had a couple of good pitches to hit, and Pitcher. he smoked them. Number 20. He's made 25 or 30 Aaron people in the stands very, oh, very yeah. happy tonight. Not to mention 25 or 30 people in the Ranger dugout. That ball was hit pretty well. Not a bad pitch. That was a slider away, and Michael just ripped it into left field. Frank hustling all the way, scores easily. Ball was cut off at third base by Peltier. Rangers add to their lead. So Young's at first, Porter at second. Three straight singles produce a run. 4 2 Texas, and here is Darren Oliver, who had a double his first time up. A strike at 92 miles an hour in the outside corner. 0 1. Oliver, a career 226 hitter. We saw Pat Mahomes talking to his teammates in the dugout after Oliver's double. Mahomes has a higher career batting average than Oliver. Not over 300, though. It's 273. This is a high fly ball into left center field. Sheffield is over. And there is the second out. So Darren's one for two at the plate. In other words, Pat was exaggerating that lifetime right, batting average a little bit. Well, unless he has information that the Ranger media personnel See, uh, or media guide does not have. Well, he distinctly said, I'm a three. Maybe he thinks of himself as a 313 hitter, even though the maybe, numbers don't support that. Maybe he hit that. 313 last year. With last year Mets. in Dodger Stadium. There might be somewhere where he hit 313. But even if he's a 270 hitter as a pitcher, that's a superb batting average. Eric Gagne throws in the Dodger bullpen. Pat Mahomes behind the bullpen coach Larry Hardy down in the Ranger bullpen. He's hoping to get a chance not only on the mound but at the plate this week. The ball got away and Porter moved to third. Young holds on at first. It was one of those cases where Young at first wasn't positive that Porter was going to go to third base, so he didn't get the same kind of jump that Porter did. Porter tries to block it, can't do it. Getting in the leadoff spot in the order. Rangers have a run across on three hits here in the fourth. Trying for more with a hot hitter at the plate, Sierra. And low. 2 0 to Ruben. What a big hit it was for Sierra in the eighth inning last night. The go ahead two run double. Off Jay Powell gave the Rangers the lead in the bottom of the eighth. But it did not turn out to be the game winner. Thanks to Orlando Merced. There's a strike two and one. Look at what the six through nine hitters are doing tonight for Texas. A 750 average. Catalanato, Porter, Young, and Oliver. Catalanato's two for two. Porter is one for two. And the out was on a liner to third. Young is a homer and a single in the eighth spot, and Oliver has a double in the ninth spot. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. Rockapek took something off that pitch. Made it look just like the fastball. Ruben swung at it like it was a fastball, but it wasn't. It was a changeup. It was a little bit out in front of it. Check on Young at first. Rangers with good speed on the bases with Young at first and Porter at third. Two outs here in the fourth. Sierra has 14 RBIs his last 13 games, hitting 381 over this stretch. And six extra base hits in 13 games.
fact, seven extra base hits. He's got a double, a triple, and a homer in his last two games. Young headed to second base. Porter breaks for the plate. The throw to the plate. Porter scores. Ball gets away. Young's headed for third. It's 5-2 Texas. Well, that's stealing a run right there. The fake to third, go back to first, trapped Michael Young, and then he did the right thing. He stopped to get in a rundown with the hopes that the man at third base, Bo Porter, would break and score. The Rangers execute it. There's the fake to third, and he's got Young hung up. He rushes him. He throws to second. He looks home, sees Porter going. The ball sails into the runner and past the catcher, Kruder. The Rangers steal a run. A good throw, and Porter's out at the plate. And here comes another run home as Ruben Sierra comes through again. It's an RBI single. It scores Young from third, and it's 6 2 Texas. Ruben gets his 15th RBI, and he's only been up at the big league Catcher level, seven. playing on a regular basis Demon. here in the last couple of weeks. Rodriguez. Jim Tracy, the Dodger manager, was quoted in the paper as being very disappointed in his team for yesterday's performance. Felt that they gave the game away because of fundamentally poor play. And he'll have something else to worry about right now with these two runs. A good throw by the second baseman, Grezelanik, home. They get Bo Porter, and the inning's over. With a wild throw and a base hit, two run score that probably shouldn't have scored. Rangers add two runs to their lead. Now it's a four run lead. Well, Pudge Rodriguez trying to make the Dodgers pay for it some more here with two outs in the fourth. Three runs across. It was a double steal credited to. Young and Porter stolen bases for both the error charge to Cora allowing Young to go to third he scores on the single by Sierra. Sierra now has 15 RBIs in his last 14 games. Over 44 at bats he's had he has 15 RBIs. One and two. Over the last couple of years, we've seen that double steal work against the Rangers several occasions. Nice to see it work for the Rangers. Cora had a chance to get Porter at the plate. The throw had been on target. I said Grizzlonic. Was that Por uh, Cora? The I throw? thought it was Cora. Yeah, I, I believe the error was charged to Cora. The wrong guy throwing. <laughs> Yep, that's Grezelonic yeah. behind there. That was Cora. It was one of those plays where Cora stepped toward first base, anticipating the throw to first, and then realized he had to throw home. He really wasn't in position to make an accurate throw, and he did. Pudge went around. It's a strikeout to end the fourth inning, but what a fourth inning it was, complete with a double steal and four singles and three runs. And how about Michael Young? Dodgers Stadium in L.A. It's the Rangers and the Dodgers. And a nice start to this one for Texas. A 6-2 to two lead. Six runs, nine hits for Texas. Two runs, four hits for Los Angeles. Darren Oliver looking for his fifth win and seven decisions. Faces Sean Green to start it off for L.A. in the fourth. Green homered his first time against Oliver. This one's hit down the line and left. Long run for Catalanato. It's a foul ball. A souvenir down the line. Happy fan. Did Sean Green ever get a hold of this one? This was estimated at 452 feet. Four fifty. They estimated at four fifty-two. Wow. 
How high did it land? The orange seats? It didn't, even go, the orange? It didn't go over the orange seats. It's 360. A straightaway right field. I guess that's possible. When you look at our ballpark when the ball goes off the restaurant in left field. It's not measured at 450. And that's the same amount of rows, same distance. Maybe we need to remeasure. Maybe we should. We might be underestimating some of those tape measure home runs. But when you think about it, where that ball would have landed had to be 90 feet past the fence. Probably an accurate call. Foul on the first base side. I believe there's been a ball hit out of Dodger Stadium before. I don't know whether it was Willie Stargell or Frank Robinson, Dave Kingman, someone I think has hit a ball out of here. How far could that ball go? If that's halfway up the bleachers. They hit one all the way out. Rounder to first. Palmero flips to Oliver covering, and there is the first out. There is one down. The Aflac trivia question What two former Rangers won the Rookie of the Year Lester. Award with the Dodgers? The Dodgers have had Gary. a lot of Rookie of the Year Sheffield. Award winners. What two former Rangers won the Rookie of the Year with the Dodgers? In fact, Tom Stoner tells us that the Dodgers have had 16 Rookie of the Year winners in their history. Gary Sheffield, the hitter. A pie, ball one and oh. Shot foul on the third base side, one ball and one strike. Sheffield has that unusual batting style where he wiggles the bat almost excessively. Not the kind of style that you would teach to a young player, but it works for him. Only because he's so strong, so athletic, and his timing is so great. That is not an easy way for a normal batter to hit, but it works for Sheffield. Two and two. A little bloop. Gonna be a tough play, and it will fall. Almost identical location. The ball hit earlier that A-Rod could not come up with. This one was beyond his reach. Catalanato, the left fielder. As well, Sheffield hit it into no man's land. Adrian Beltre. It's one of those full swings off the end of the bat kind of balls that can fool an outfielder. You think it's hit better than it really is. Frank plays a little bit deeper in the outfield, which I think is the right thing to do. If you're not accustomed to playing in the outfield, you'd rather play a little bit deeper. This is the earlier ball that A Rod does get to, just doesn't catch. Last one was hit just a little further, he never could get to it. All right, Tom. There have been home runs hit out of Dodger Stadium as Adrian Beltre hits. It's been done four times, in fact, four times. by three different players. Willie Stargell did it twice for the Pirates. Mike Piazza did it once for the Dodgers, and Mark McGuire with the Cardinals did it. Do they have a tail of the tape on Yes, them? they do. Willie Stargell, the longest one, out of Dodger Stadium, 506 feet 6 inches to right field in 1969. He also hit one 470 feet out of Dodger Stadium in 1973 of Andy Messersmith. One and one, the Piazza homer came in 1997 to left field off Frank Castillo, 478 feet. And the McGuire homer was 483 to left center 
of Jamie Arnold in 1999. Well, it's hard to imagine then that if the one that Sean Green hit went 450, that the other one only went 20 feet farther. A rod to Young and on to first, and nicely done. Nice turn again by the rookie second baseman. He got the ball quickly from A rod and turns it. He's doing it at the plate and in the field. We're through four. Well, we asked the Aflac trivia question last half inning. What two former Rangers won the Rookie of the Year award with the Dodgers? And the answer, Frank Howard in 1960 and Steve Howe in 1980 was the Rookie of the Year with the Dodgers. Of course, Howard hit the first home run at Arlington Stadium in a major league game there, straightaway center field for the Rangers. But in 1960, he was a Dodger and won the Rookie of the Year. We go to the fifth inning, three, four, and five hitters coming up for Texas. Which means A Rod leads it off, to be followed by Palmero and Caminetti. The Rangers leading the game six to two after a three run fourth inning. One and oh to Alex, who's 0 for two. Grounded to first, got an RBI on the ground out. And he flied to left. It's one and one to A Rod. Two balls and one strike. Well, this one of only two games being played in the big leagues tonight. Braves and Blue Jays playing in Toronto, the only other game on the schedule today. Trying to check his swing. The first base umpire, Fielden Colbert, says he did not go around. And the count goes to three and one. to third Beltre goes across one down in the fifth inning well coming up tonight on the Southwest Sports Report 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to home teams throughout the Southwest compact center flooding Jerry Jones new field of dreams he's looking for a new stadium and Shaq takes a shot at Don Nelson that's an old story, isn't it? Apparently a new shot at Don Nelson. For extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews, catch the Southwest Sports Report tonight after the game only on Fox Sports Net. I'm Jerry Jones making his comments at the new Cowboys golf course in Grapevine today. Raphael hits a bomb to right field. It is way back. And it is out of here into the Ranger bullpen. It's a two home run game for Rafael Palmero. Robbie went. Rafi went to left center field on a line. And this one he pulls to right a high towering drive baseman, way eight. back in the bullpen. Ken. Caminetti. Right, hanging slider, belt high. I'm sure we're not seeing Prokopek at his best today. The game with a fine record in the ERA and the four. The Rangers have taken advantage of a lot of pitches up in the strike zone. Caminetti pops up to left field. A lot of belt high pitches up and out over the plate. The guys that can hit the ball a long way. Rafi's taken advantage of it. He's done it twice. Two homers for Rafi, one for Michael Young. Rangers now with 101 home runs on the season. Palmero hit the 99th of the year for the team. Young hit number 100, and Palmero number 101. The Rangers lead the major leagues in homers. When you look at all the extra base hits the Rangers have hit today. Every one of them has been on a belt high pitch, mostly fastballs. The last one a hanging slider. And for Prokopet. 
There are some teams you can throw that pitch to and get them out, but this is not one of them. That's much better. Pop in the shallow right. Green has it, and Catalanato is retired for the first time in this game. The Rafael Palmero goes deep, number 17 on the year, 417 in his career. Rangers with a five run cushion at the halfway point here at Dodger Stadium. Rafael Palmero with another two home run game. That's three this year for Palmero. Most recently had a two home run game on May 29th. Luke Prokopek has given up three homers tonight. He's Grissom leads it off against Darren Oliver. There's a strike 0 1. Grissom has 13 homers on the year. Grissom, Cora, and Kruder for the Dodgers in the fifth. And it's one and one. It's the 26th time in Rafael Palmero's career that he has had a two home run game. Fouled off, and Palmero, 30th on the all time home run list, is closing in on a former teammate. Cal Ripken Jr. is next in line. Ripken. Has 420 career home runs. Palmero with 417 now. He's three behind. The man in 29th place on the all time list. Two balls and two strikes to Grissom. Side. Grissom's making a nice comeback this year. He has struggled the last few years, whether it's been in Cleveland or Milwaukee, wherever he's been. This year he's having a pretty good year. Already has 13 home runs. I don't have his stats in front of me, but chances are 13 home runs is more than he's had the last couple of years. Had 14 last year with the Brewers. Had 20 and 99 with the Brewers. Last year with Milwaukee at just 244 with 14 homers. Well, Doug Mirabelli is now a technician apparently in the Ranger dugout. He's going to take that up. It's like he got <laughs> caught in the act. <laughs> Three and two to Grissom. Turns on it. It's way foul. Second deck. Dodgers picked up Grissom from the Brewers in late February, early days of spring training for Devon White. So it's hit to right center and Sierra is over. And there is the first out. Shortstop number three. Alex. Next tell you Cora. make the call. Doug Mirabelli is listening in. <laughs> trying to communicate with someone. At least be on the receiving end of communication. Alex Cora, the hitter. Getting his first plate appearance after coming on for Jeff Revelle. Doug phone home. <laughs> One thing Darren has done the last couple of starts is he's worked much quicker. He's getting the ball, getting the sign, and throwing it without much time in between. Really, I think, has helped his tempo. A little more aggressive. And the results against Seattle for seven innings and so far into the fifth inning of this ballgame have been positive. Sometimes the pitcher Catcher just thinks too much, takes too much time, Ten. loses his aggressiveness, Roger. throws too many pitches, but Darren's a lot more aggressive right now. So two outs here in the uh, fifth inning. 
Students who receive straight A's or perfect attendance in the final six weeks grading period qualify to receive a voucher to redeem for selected games from the Rick Hellings Heroes program. For information, call 817-436-5990. That's 817-436-5990. Program. Rick Hellings Heroes. Honoring students making good grades, straight A's, and perfect attendance in the final six weeks grading period. One ball and one strike to Chad Cruder. That's two and one. Talking about with Darren Oliver is something that the Rangers have tried to work with him on, not be so deliberate in between pitches, get into a rhythm. The scouts say when he was in the National League with the Cardinals, he was more into a good rhythm and not being so deliberate. So deliberate. And as one scout put it, obsessed with mechanics. Three and one to Cruder. Toward the middle, Alex back to his feet, fires to first. It's a nice one, two, three inning in the fifth for Darren Oliver. We are through five, and the Rangers up by five. And it's one of tonight's home run hitters coming up in this sixth inning. The Sonic Slam inning. Michael Young on deck. He'll be second to hit. Against a new pitcher for the Dodgers in a 7 to 2 game. Rangers team. Ten hits off the starter oh, Luke Pakapek. It's Eric Gagne on. Gagne has had 12 Tim starts Bogar. this year, only three relief. Appearances. Yeah. 123 overall professional games. He's pitched out of the bullpen only six times. Up for the Texas Rangers. A new role for Gagne. Number 16. Center fielder. Oh, Gagne Porter. faces Porter. Young and Oliver in the Sonic Slam inning. An Australian to start the game. It's a Canadian. On now out of the Dodger bullpen. Bo Porter swings at the first pitch, sends it sailing deep to right center field. It is way back and off the wall. Bo Porter with great speed is headed for third. He will hold on at third. Thought about going home. Bobby Jones was telling him to stay. Ball got away. Porter took a few steps toward home. He'll hold on with a triple. With two outs, Bo could have scored, but with nobody out to play it safe at third base. Bo jumping on the first pitches he sees today, and he's seen several good pitches to hit. That's the third ball he's Second hit higher. Hard. He lined into a double play, had a single yeah. to the left, and off the wall for a triple. His relay throw goes off the glove of the cutoff man. Beltre picks it up. I think if Porter had to, he probably might have beaten that throw home. But with nobody out, he let someone drive in. Well, that one hit Young. So two on very quickly against Gagne. Pitcher number 28, Darren Oliver. Michael got his head out of the way, but I don't think he was too worried about whether it hit him in the arm or not. He'll take first base. Jim Colburn, pitching coach. Pitched a no-hitter against the Rangers. Well, the defensive changes for the Dodgers, which affects the batting order. Tim Bogar is the new first baseman. As Gagne comes into the game, Bogar hits in the pitcher spot, the ninth spot in the order. And Gagne will hit in the eighth spot as Paul Laduca, who was the first baseman, is now the catcher. So Gagne hits in Cruder's spot. Chad Cruder out of the game. The pitcher hits eighth in the lineup. Jim Coburn was a fine major league pitcher with the Brewers. He won 20 games at one point in time. And went to Kansas City. And in Kansas City, pitched a no hitter. Well, Michael Young just hit by the pitch. He in his first at bat, got his first major league home run from a friends and family back home in Los Angeles. And then in the fourth inning, he got his second RBI. 
right through the left side. It scored Catalanato from second. Couple of hits, couple of RBIs, and now he's hit by a pitch. He's reached base three straight times. And now Darren Oliver, who had a double. Big head, that's why. <laughs> one and one. Man, I'm letting Darren hit here. The way he can swing the bat, I'm not going to force him to sacrifice bunt. Well, maybe he's going to just show bunt and slap one through. He does have a little bit of a problem with that helmet. <laughs> see, see the earlobe underneath the ear flap. Got it, Oliver, a left handed pitcher, but. Hits from the right side, which leaves that left arm exposed. Turns at the corners, one ball, one strike. Shows Bunn again, pops it foul. One and two. This was Oliver in the second inning, first at bat for a Ranger pitcher this year. He went the opposite way. It had a shot. It bounced over the fence, a ground rule double. He ran right out of his batting helmet. He jumped on a hanging slider right there. I thought originally that was a fastball, but that was a hanging slider. Darren's in better shape right now with two strikes because he probably won't have the bunt sign when he can swing away. No guarantee he's going to hit the ball. Button, two strikes. I don't know. I think with a, with a five run lead, you just want to get as many runs as you can. Darren's got as good a chance of getting a base hit as he does getting a sacrifice bunt down. Ranger pitchers have been taking batting practice for the regular batting practice the last three weeks or so. He makes contact, but it rolls foul, and that's an out. Well, Young will have to return to first base. So there is one out. Darren looks a lot more comfortable swinging the bat than he does butting at it. Number 24, Ruben Sierra. I just wanted to see him swing. See if he could have gotten another hit. He had his mind on the bunt, but his rear end was going the wrong way. <laughs> he got a double and a fly ball to left field. And on first and third and no outs. I think Jerry's probably worried he might hit him with a double play. And Sierra, straightaway center field. Grissom. Porter with good speed, tags at third, and he will score. And yet another RBI for Ruben Sierra, his second of the game. It's a sacrifice fly. High fives all around for Ruben. And the Ranger lead is six now. It's eight to two. Ivan Rodriguez. Well, Ruben has that high leg kick, and he's an aggressive hitter. But he doesn't strike out that much. He makes contact. He's a good man to have up with a man on third base in less than two outs. Feel pretty confident that he's going to put the ball in play somewhere. The way he's been swinging the last week or ten days, he's going to put it in play and hit it hard. Pudge struck out a couple of times against Prokopek. He's 0 for 3 with Young over at first base. And this is the Sonic Slam inning, and Robert E. King of Wiley, the contestant. If Pudge connects for his 13th homer of the year here, it'll mean $1,500 for Robert King of Wiley. And it would be the fourth straight game that Pudge has hit a home run in. Other well, Rangers who have homered in four straight games besides Pudge, who did it earlier this year. Kapler did it last year. Palmero did it in 1999. Kevin Elster in 96. Juan Gonzalez in 1992. Pete O'Brien back in 87. And Mike Hargrove in 77. Two and oh to Rodriguez.
swing and a miss. It's two and one. Gagne in relief of Luke Prokopek, who went five innings and gave up seven runs on ten hits, no walks, and three strikeouts. It's two and two. Gagne, 25 years old, born and still makes his offseason home in Montreal. Signed with the Dodgers in 95. He missed all of the 97 season due to Tommy John surgery. Two years ago, he was the Texas League Pitcher of the Year with San Antonio. Won 12 games that year with a 263 year and run average. Top back up the middle and stepping on second base, making the play is Gresselonic. For the final out of the sixth inning, the next Sonic slam inning jackpot goes up to $1,600. Dodger Stadium. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Aaron Oliver and the Rangers with a six run lead. Eight to two. About hit the Dodgers by six. Tim Bogar headed for the corner. It's fair. It's out of here. Tim Bogar, who missed much of the first two months of the season with an injury, has his second home run in just over a week. Quite as dramatic as his first home run, which is a game winner in the 10th inning in Enron Field a week ago yesterday. Catcher number well, 16. this ball to the right part of the ballpark. Right down the line. 330 feet, went about 335 feet. Just inside the foul pole, a couple of rows back. With the lead cut to five, Tim Bogar. It was a dramatic home run at Enron Field a week ago yesterday in the 10th inning of a wild game. It was a 9-8 game, a 10-9 game, something like that. And Bogar, who hadn't contributed all season, got an opportunity and hit one out. A former Astro hit it against his former team. Now this one's hit high and deep, but foul at the Battle of Duca. Had five home runs hit in tonight's game. Bogar the latest to do it. Rangers have three home runs. The Dodgers with two. All solo shots. Second home run Oliver has given up tonight. Just given up six home runs all year. Three and two to Laduca. Oliver at 78 pitches right now. Field in front of Sierra, so two straight hits to start the sixth inning. See some action in the Ranger bullpen now. Second baseman, number eight, Mark Rezalonic. Oliver went seven innings in his last start, and up five hits. Pat Mahomes is the man first called to pitch in the bullpen tonight. Gresselonic with a 12 game hit streak on the line. He has hit well against lefties this year 372 against left handed pitchers. Pops it up. Romero the first baseman. Coaching box has it. There's the first out. Big out for Darren Oliver with the heart of the order coming up. Right fielder number 15, Sean Green.
Here's Sean Green. Who homered in the first off Oliver. Trying to get the Dodgers back into this game. looking for his fifth win the Rangers have given him some run support this year back in April in the games that he won the Rangers scored seven runs ten runs nine runs for him eleven runs in another game Bobby Cuellar pitching coach for just under a week makes his way to the mound to talk with Oliver as Mahomes warms in the Ranger bullpen one out, one run in, and a man on here in the bottom of the sixth inning. But tomorrow it's totally NASCAR, your exclusive all access garage pass with 30 minutes of NASCAR news and highlights, plus the latest developments on what's gearing up for this week's race. Totally NASCAR tomorrow at 6, only on Fox Sports Net. Conference over. Oliver versus Green, lefty against lefty. Hat back toward the mound. Oliver goes to second. High throw. A Rod got his foot down on the bag. It's an out. That was a great play by A Rod. Brings back memories of the game in Colorado. When That's right. Fired that ball into center field. He fielded the ball nicely, turned and fired nicely. But it takes a very acrobatic play by Alex to keep his foot on the bag. You can see him go way up and come down. He's just able to tag the second base bag before LaDuca gets there. So the Rangers get a force play. Almost threw that ball into center field. Very Sheffield, the hitter. Isn't it funny how certain plays stick in your memory? That yeah. was that play was when Oliver was with the Rangers before he was traded away. <laughs> <laughs> it happened at the end of the game. I know it was a critical play in the ball game. I can't give you the details behind it. Was it was 1998, June of 98, maybe three years ago. Bad memory. But I remember it too. Now that you bring it up, and it was interleague baseball in Denver. Sean Green moves into scoring position on the play. Look at this guy right here. You've got six innings, three runs, quality start. Sheffield. That middle zone, 5'11. Best spot for Sheffield, that bottom quadrant, down and away. Actually, I guess that wouldn't be a quadrant, would it? <laughs> that means there's only four. That's right. I don't know what you call one out of nine. Section area, something like that. <laughs> it's funny, Tom, on this computer, I have details on Ranger games going back the last several years. It was three years ago today, June 11th of 98, wow. when Oliver made the that anniversary throw. of the throw <laughs> in the center field. Rangers lost that game nine to eight. Rangers had a four run lead, and blew the lead. John Rutland was in that game, I remember. Didn't he give up the home run to lose it? Was that the same one? Yeah. Might have been. Amazing, June 11th of that season. Well, Sean Green at second base, and Gary Sheffield, who homered 
in yesterday's game. I think it was Dante Bichette that hit the home run in that game. Bichette had a hit for the cycle in one game up there against the Rangers. Oh, that was it. Swing and a miss. Huge strikeout for Darren Oliver. And this is a quality start. Six innings, three runs given up by Darren. Take you back to the fourth inning of this game. It's been all Rangers. Frank Catalanato has come through. Bottom of the order in a big way. Bo Porter has a single and a triple. But in the fourth inning, it was three straight singles by Catalanato, Porter, and Young. Young got his second RBI there, a three run to fourth inning that puts some distance between the Rangers and the Dodgers. Palmero is 26th career, two home run game. Darren Oliver's got six innings. Michael Young, first major league home run. Been a nice night so far, but still some work to be done through six innings. The game summary as the Rangers lead it 8 3. Alex Rodriguez leads it off for Texas in the seventh. Looking for his first hit, he's 0 for 3. No balls, two strikes. One and two to Alex, followed by Palmero and Caminetti. Rangers and Dodgers play again tomorrow night and Wednesday night. Tomorrow night it's Mike Judd making his first start for Texas, a former Dodger against Darren Dreifert. Kenny Rogers scheduled to start on Wednesday night. Rogers a late arrival at the ballpark tonight. Mike Judd has appeared in relief a couple of times for the Rangers. Gets his first start tomorrow. It's been a while since he's pitched in a game. Kenny Rogers had an injection in his back back in Arlington today took a flight out here and arrived just before game time. He's been bothered by back spasms his last couple of starts. Hopefully things will work out. Rogers will be able to make his scheduled start on Wednesday. As you joined us late Gabe Kapler was a late scratch due to the flu bug. Rusty Greer left after the first inning with a strained left hamstring. His first hit of the night, leading off the seventh inning, a single for Alex. First baseman, number 20. Erod is on at first for Palmero. Palmero. Southwest Sports Report, 30 minutes of nightly sports news, completely dedicated to home teams throughout the Southwest. It's tonight after the game, right here on Fox Sports Net. Palmero with two home runs tonight. Hoppy sends it high, deep down the line, 330 down the line. It is a foul ball. Making a bid for a three home run game. Belt high and out over the plate. That's the line shot to left center field right over Don Drysdale. Belt high and right down the middle. And that ball is way out of there. Right and he just missed his third one. Slowly hit the second. Big hop. Russell on it. Cora turns it on to first. The double play. Erases the leadoff single. Third baseman, number 11, Ken Kamenetti. Turning easy chance. Now if he just missed his third home run and hit into a double play. Would have been the first three home run game of Rafi's career. And 
that's just the second time this season that Rafael Palmero has grounded into a double play. The other time was in the first inning of last night's game. Palmero went 217 at bats this season without grounding into a double play. Solani gone to first to get Caminetti, and that will conclude the top of the seventh inning. It's stretch time at Dodger Stadium. Let's now take you to the Fox Network Center across town in L.A. for a sports break. This National Sports Report sports break is brought to you by Computer Associates. I'm Kevin Frazier, the National, here with this sports break. Interleague play continues as the Red Hot Braves go north of the border to take on the struggling Blue Jays. Barry Bonds gives us a rare sit-down interview, and he speaks candidly about his chase of Mark McGuire's home run record. And the war of words between Shaq and Dikembe Mutombo is heating up. Our crew in Philly will have the latest from the NBA Finals. It's all tonight at 10.30 right here on The National. the seventh inning at Dodger Stadium. The Rangers lead the Dodgers 8 to 3 about hit LA 12 to 7. It's been a good one so far Here's for Texas. Now pitching for the, the Rangers try to win game one of this three game series against LA. Pat Mahomes. And a new pitcher is on for the Rangers. Quality start for Darren Oliver Dodgers as he 29. went six innings. Pat Mahomes gets the call. Pat Mahomes back in the bullpen. ZRA has gone up to 698 mostly because of what happened in some of his starts. Four of his last five appearances came as a starter. In those four starts, he was one and two with a 1260 ERA. Pat is probably glad to be back in the bullpen. I think he's the kind of guy that likes the opportunity to pitch often. To be able to come to the ballpark every day with a chance to pitch. Not that he can't be a successful starter. I think right now his niche is probably in the bullpen. It's where he has a great value to the team because of his versatility, because of the fact that he can pitch a lot of innings and still come back and pitch the next day. I think he likes being aggressive coming into a ball game, middle of the game, going right after the hitters. Adrian Beltre. Marquise Grissom, Alex Cora do up here in the seventh inning for L.A. That's a fair ball past the diving Caminetti headed for the corner. Beltre into second base. He's got a leadoff double. Center fielder number nine. Holmes threw a slider, it didn't slide, it stayed right in the middle of the plate. Beltre found the hole right down the line past him. Beltre at second base with a double. And Holmes, even when he was first going into the starting rotation three or four days before his first scheduled start, and even between his starts, would tell Jerry Naren that he's available to work out of the bullpen if necessary. Same lines of what you're talking about. He's the type of pitcher who wants the ball every day. Even when he was in the rotation, he would ask for it. It was a foul ball. Automatic Grissom. 0-1. Darren Oliver, 89 pitches tonight. In position to win his fifth game. Go to five and two on the year if the bullpen can hold what is a five-run lead right now. Oliver six innings, seven hits, three runs, all earned. No walks in two strikeouts. So his last two starts now, Oliver has gone 13 innings and given up just three earned runs since coming off the disabled list. Oliver pitching better since coming off the disabled list than he did the first month of the season when he accumulated four victories. Slowly hit the chopper left side. Runner holds at second. Caminetti just gets Grissom at first base for the first out. One down in the seventh inning. For in-depth stats on where they hit them and everything Alex. else baseball, log on oh. to TexasRangers.com. Your official source for Rangers stats, TexasRangers.com. Connect with it. There's the game day feature on TexasRangers.com. You can be connected to the internet while you're watching a Ranger game. Get up to the date stats. There's a 
strike from Mahomes to Alex Cora. Rangers did not make a double switch when they put Mahomes into the game. He would be scheduled to hit fourth in the eighth inning, so we might get a chance to see Mahomes hit. Beat the Braves nine to four. The only other game being played in baseball today. Interleague action. John Burkett started for Atlanta and took the loss. He falls to five and five. Burkett had been pitching very well for the Braves. In fact, his last ten starts, he had an earned run average under two. But he goes five and a third innings, gives up four runs, and takes the loss as Toronto beat Atlanta nine to four. Shortstop when Jeff Rebele had to leave with a sore left hamstring. Cora has been playing a lot at shortstop for the Dodgers this year, but it was Rebele who got the start today. And ball right side. Palmero to Mahomes. Two down, runner moves to third. Greg Olson in the Dodger bullpen. Pitcher spot is up, so there'll be a pinch hitter for Gagne. Chris Donalds just activated the disabled list. Gagne out of there now. Greg Olson pitching the eighth inning. And at third, two outs, five run game. Going one. Dodgers have had some injury problems in their starting rotation. Kevin Brown's on the disabled list right now with a nerve problem in his neck. Not sure when Kevin Brown will be coming back. Alan Ashby on the disabled list. And the disturbing news today for the Dodgers. Ashby out for the season now. This one hits straight away center field. Porter's there. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the seventh inning. Mahomes does the job. We go to the eighth. Catalanato to lead it off for Texas when we come back. Riding a 12 hit attack, the Rangers lead the Dodgers 8 to 3 as we go to the eighth inning here at Dodgers Stadium. Fence is rather tasty. Catalanato. <laughs> well, the Texas Rangers. Leading the Los Angeles Dodgers here in the Rangers softball camp, providing an opportunity for girls age 7 to 15 to receive professional instruction from former major leaguers and college coaches. The camp will be held June 26th through the 29th with a special appearance by Olympic gold medalist Jennifer McFalls. 817 273 5869, the number to call for information. Greg Olson, the new pitcher, facing Frank Catalanato to start the eighth. Right back to the mound, off the glove of Olson. Able to recover and flip underhanded to first baseman Bogar, and there is one out. 26th game for Olson, 564 ERA. One thing that has played in this year has probably been his control. He's walked 17 oh. batters and 22 Port innings. Here. Opponents are only hitting 235, and he has just about a strikeout an inning. But he's been a little bit wild on the season. Olson has had some very good years if you go back a while in his career. Good closer with the Orioles for a number of years. In fact, has 217 saves in his big league career. Bo Porter, the hitter. Porter with 
single and a triple in tonight's game, hitting over 300 now at the big league level. Spent some time at AAA Oklahoma. Pulled up two days ago and making the most of his first start as he was inserted into the lineup late when Gabe Kapler was a late scratch with the flu. Olson's 1 1 pitch to Porter. 2 and 1. Mentioned Alan Ashby on the disabled list. He'll have season ending surgery for a torn flexor muscle, the bone of his right elbow. It's not good news for the Dodgers who are hoping Ashby would be able to come back from that elbow injury. A blow to the starting rotation. Two and two. Rangers are missing Chan Ho Park in this series. Park started a couple of days ago. They will catch Darren Dreifert tomorrow night. Giovanni Carrara starts on Wednesday night for L.A. against Kenny Rogers. Judd against Dreifert tomorrow. Three and two to Porter. When Olsen was in his heyday, his fastball was 94, 95 miles an hour. And he had a good overhand curveball. He still has a pretty good curveball, but not like it was seven or eight years ago. It was one of those knee buckling curveballs. He came in, the game was usually over. Four Porter is aboard. He reaches for the third straight time. Second baseman. It's the first Number walk two. issued by either Mike team. Young. Now bring up Mike Young. Porter aboard at first with one out. Young has raised the average to 196 with a homer in the single. Also was hit by a pitch. He's reached base all three times. And he is going to feel good tonight when he takes a shower and goes out and greets all his relatives. There are going to be some proud people to meet him after the game. There's a strike, no balls, and two strikes to Young. Young hit eight home runs at AAA Oklahoma before being called up in late May. So he's shown some good power in the minor leagues. Of course, Young was picked up by the Rangers last July in the Esteban Loiza trade. He and Darwin Kubian came over from the Blue Jays. The Rangers have since dealt Kubian to the Expos for Mike Johnson, who's starting at AAA Oklahoma now. Young was the regular at second base for the Red Hawks. Got called up when Randy Velarde went on the disabled list. Nice. Strong in the field, too. Last time I looked at the box scores, Kubian hadn't given up a run yet for Montreal. It was amazing. Had an earn run average over 10 with the Oklahoma Red Hawks. He gets traded, and he, a week later, gets called up to the big leagues by the Expos and puts together a string here where he hadn't given up an earn run. You know, Kubian, when he was first called up by the Rangers in August of last year, had a similar streak, and then in September, he couldn't get anybody out. And he couldn't get anybody out at the AAA level before the Rangers dealt him away. Here's the one two. Check swing by Young. He went around, says the first base umpire, Field and Cobra. So the strikeout the first time that Young has been retired tonight and there are two outs and Pat Mahomes gets an opportunity to hit. We'll find out if he swung. Yeah that's probably probably when you bring your bat through the strike zone like that even though he really didn't bring the head of the bat as far as you would like to see for a strike. Tough to argue that one. You sort of see by the expression on Young's face that he thought there was a chance he could be rung up on that. Yeah, sure was, enough. It was close. We'd like to have the umpire say he didn't go, but one of those borderline ones, it's tough to argue. 
Well, let's see if Pat Mahomes can back up what he's been talking about. <laughs> it's funny that he would get a chance as a relief pitcher to hit in the ball game after that little talk before the game. <laughs> In the same game that Darren L. Oliver has hit a double line. I think he's got Darren Oliver's batting helmet on. <laughs> well, if he can hit like Darren Oliver, it means he's going to get a line drive somewhere. And a piece of it. He balls two strikes. Holmes, of course, has been with the Mets in the National League the last couple of seasons. Last got a base hit on August 22nd of last year. 273 career hitter. The best batting average of any Ranger pitcher on the staff this year. <laughs> he's got an audience. He was doing a lot of talking before the game, so he's got some people watching these swings. <laughs> now I'm leaning toward Darren's swing. That may be may be the better of the two when it comes to athletic ability. But as far as a pure swing goes, I'm afraid Darren might have the upper hand. He turns on it down the line, racing over the left fielder, and it falls for a base hit. Gary Sheffield, it falls right at his feet down the line and left. Mahomes has a hit. He hits the last laugh. And Sheffield let that ball fall in on purpose. Mahomes must have talked to him before the game. He should have caught that ball. That's just a pop up down the left field line. Fell right at his feet. In an 8-3 to three game. I don't know why you don't die for that ball. But Mahomes hangs in there. Hits a pretty good breaking ball really. A little bit off the end of the bat. He's going fall in. Fall in. <laughs> Check out the reaction. A lot of anticipation here. <laughs> we're going, oh no, we're going to have to listen. Watch where this ball lands. Not two feet from him. Not He's, two feet from his two feet. If Sheffield didn't back up, it would have hit him. Oh. No runners at the corners here for Ruben Sierra with two outs in the eighth. The Rangers pitchers have now matched the total number of hits they had all of last year. They are two for four in this game, Oliver and Mahomes. Last year, Ranger pitchers were two for 20 the entire season. Kenny Rogers got both of the hits last year. It was here at Dodger Stadium. The Ranger pitcher had the biggest hit in Ranger pitchers in interleague play. Back in 1997, Bobby Witt hit a home run here at Dodger Stadium. Strike to Sierra. And Ruben got into the lineup, and Rusty had to leave with a strained left hamstring, and he came through with an RBI single in the fourth inning, a sacrifice fly in the sixth. Has not had success in his career against this Dodger pitcher. He's had success now. Headed to the gap in right center field, all the way to the wall. Porter in to score. Pat Mahomes around third will score as well. And it's a four RBI game for Ruben Sierra. You want to talk about a rope. Ruben Sierra went down, picked that ball up a little bit off the ground, and hit a rocket. Patrick. A skimming line drive to almost straightaway second base that rolled all the way to the wall. That's about as hard as you can hit a line drive. And Ruben doesn't look like he did 10 years ago. I don't know what he looks like. He is smoking the ball right now. The other thing you like to see, you talk about Mahomes and being such a good athlete, he scored easily from first base on that ball. And trying to do a little comparison here between the offensive ability of Mahomes and Darren Oliver. I would bet that Darren Oliver would have chugged into third maybe. But he definitely wouldn't have gotten home on that ball. Right now I think the edge goes to Darren Oliver as far as just pure hitter goes. Mahomes for determination. Maybe a little cockier than Darren Oliver. <laughs> and definitely a better athlete. Well which batting helmet fits better? I don't it's almost know. a tie. They, they, both, they, they both have to work a little bit on how they look at the plate. 
acting about wearing some bigger helmets. And the Rangers reached double figures for the second time in three games. They had the 16 to 4 win over Houston Saturday. Now 10 3 over the Dodgers tonight. Rangers have scored more runs in interleague play than any team in baseball since interleague play began in 1997. 98 runs scored by the Rangers in interleague play. Pudge with another chance here. He has home runs in three straight games. He's 0 for 4 tonight, though. Ruben Sierra wasn't even in the starting lineup. If Rusty didn't come out with a hamstring injury, Ruben would have been on the bench. Instead, he goes 2 for 2 for 3 and drives in four runs in the ball game. Well, am I happy for him? He deserves the success that he's having. There's not many guys of his caliber who would have gone through what he went through to get back to the big leagues. He went to Mexico. He was in the independent league. He played in Puerto Rico in the wintertime. He went to AAA. He bounced around. And for a guy that was a superstar, not many people are willing to put that time in, pay their dues, bide their time, get to the big leagues, sit on the bench, pinch hit. So to come through with the success that he's had is really a nice thing to see. And he's earned his playing time. There was no way he was going to get playing time when he first got here. He was just a bat on the bench. And right now he's played himself into a role that's significant. And it's going to be hard for Jerry Marin to keep him out of the lineup. He wasn't in the lineup today, but even if Rusty's okay to play tomorrow, it's going to be tough to keep Ruben out of the lineup the way he's hitting. And he's hitting left handed. He's getting most of his hits left handed, and he's at least as a good a hitter right handed. His last three games now, Sierra is 6 for 12, a 500 batting average, with two doubles, a triple, a home run, and nine RBIs in three games. And has 18 RBIs on the season. Two and two to Pudge. The other thing about Ruben is that after having success earlier in his career, in the last couple of years, last year, as you mentioned, went to the Mexican League to play. He humbled himself, showed a lot of humility, worked with the younger hitters at AAA Oklahoma last year. The Rangers were very impressed by that, and it's continued at the big league level after getting called up. Three and two to Pudge. He has a four RBI game tonight. The most RBIs he's had in a game in his career came against Baltimore in 1995. He had a seven RBI game. That was when he was a member of the Yankees. Punch to center field. It is hit deep, making a big. He has homered in four straight games, tying the Ranger Club record for the second time this year. It's 12 3 Texas. The Rangers have now scored an even 400 runs in interleague play starting in 1997. Alex Rodriguez. This pitch, look at the catcher, supposed to be down and in. It's belt high, a little bit higher, right down the middle of the plate. That's just in case of the pitcher missing a spot, and Pudge Rodriguez getting on top of that high fastball and hitting a bullet out of the ballpark in center field. There have been some hard hit balls in this game. The Dodgers have hit a few, and the Rangers have hit most of them. If you doubt that you're the Dodgers, you have to be looking at the Rangers tonight. And going, How in the world? The Texas Rangers 21 and 40 coming into this ball game. One ball and one strike to A-Rod. The Rangers really have been playing good baseball. You look at the Seattle series, all of those games were winnable. You look at the Houston series, they bombed them one game, could have won the other two. And they had 12 to 3 in this game. So good baseball. They haven't been winning as many as you'd like. 
but they're playing a lot better. And they're breaking out the big bats tonight. Pudge, the second time this season, has home runs in four straight games, a club record. Well, we're through seven and a half innings here at Dodger Stadium, and the Rangers making some noise in the National League ballpark. First game in the park this year, and they've got 12 runs on 15 hits. And Pat Mahomes has one of those hits. Pudge Rodriguez has one of those hits now in one of four home runs hit by the Rangers tonight. Palmero has two of the home runs. And Michael Young back home in Los Angeles, his first major league home run tonight. It's Tim Bogar who has a home run tonight. And his lone at bat with the foul ball. Holmes gave up a leadoff double in the seventh and got the next three in order in relief of Darren Oliver here. The ball's two strikes to Bogard. Second straight hit, a homer and a single. Pitcher number 16. There are the two pitchers for the Rangers tonight with batting helmets on. Probably the same helmet, which would lead you to believe that if you're going on pure hat size, Darren Oliver may, came, may come out on top. <laughs> Neither one of those will go into the fashion magazines, though. <laughs> and Zach Manassian will definitely have to order bigger helmets next year. Because their heads are bigger now because they both have hits tonight. That's true. But you know, it's not what you look like in a helmet. It's what you do with a bat in your hand. And both of them have upheld the tradition of their boastfulness before the game anyway, coming through in the clutch. Darren might be a little more modest than Pat. <laughs> Trying to look for other forms of comparison here. Mahomes, a terrific basketball player in high school in East Texas in Lindale. This one off the bat of Paul LaDuca has a chance. It's to the base of the fence. But on the breaks at third base is Bogar. And a single and a double to start the Dodger half of the eighth. field they're invincible but off the field they're all too human Fox Sports takes a look at the athletes you thought you knew this week Sean Elliott appeared to have it all until a mysterious illness tested his will to survive and revealed his true courage find out about the Sean Elliott you never knew as beyond the glory takes you inside the hidden world of sports biggest stars it's beyond the glory it's tomorrow at 9 and it's right here on Fox Sports net Mark Gresselonic looking for a 13 game hit streak has it and also as an RBI, the lead cut to eight. It's 12-4. His 33rd run batted in. Right fielder number 15. Three straight hits Sean off Mahomes. Green. The tough guys coming up. Ingressalonic is hobbling at first base. He has to come out. He'd be the third player to come out of the game with an injury, and a fourth game. Hapler was a late scratch due to the flu. Up right there. Watch Ouch. The ankle. Oh, that hurts. That Greselonic was watching the ball in the outfield, just casually going around the bag like he does all the time in routine fashion. He just hit the corner of the bag funny. His foot slipped off, turned his ankle. Man, he's going to have to come out of the game, and that's going to be sore tomorrow, boy. That might be a trip to the disabled list. It's a shame.
Grizzlonic having a nice year. Came into the ball game as a second baseman at 313 with eight home runs and 32 RBIs. Iram Boca Chica will come in and run for Grizzlonic. Well, the Dodgers having some problems with their middle infielders as Jeff Rebele left with a sore left hamstring back in the second inning. And now Mark Grizzlonic, who just got the hit to extend his hit streak to a Dodger season high 13 games in a row. Now he has to leave with an apparent sprained ankle. But the Dodgers now running at first base for Grizzlonic. Number 33. Boca Chica. Boca Chica is the runner at first base. Sean Green will be the hitter for the Dodgers with runners at the corners and nobody out here in the eighth inning. Hoping the Dodgers don't turn this into a College World Series game. You know, so many teams in that College World Series have come back from eight or nine run deficits. Rangers had a nine run lead to start this inning. This one's hit to the gap in left center field. It will fall. One run is in. Boca Chica will hold it third. Sean Green has his second extra base hit of the game and his second RBI. It's 12 to 5. Well, Pat's getting well, some Jordan pitches up. There have been a lot of belt high Jerry, fastballs and belt high handed sliders in this ball game. Both teams have benefited from it. The hitters are taking advantage of those pitches. There's been a lot of line drives, a lot of long home runs, a lot of ropes through the infield. Bobby Cuellar is going to come out and talk to Mahomes and the Rangers and have to get someone ready down in the bullpen. It's 12 to 5. There's still nobody out. There's men at second and third. You don't want to let this one get away. Right now, Pat's having a hard time keeping the ball down. With a 12 3 lead as the eighth inning began, like that Jerry Nairn was hopeful of Mahomes maybe even finishing this game out going the last three innings. He came on in the seventh. Wolfen was not active until now. Minifro is up and throwing. Four straight men have reached the Southwest Sports Report. 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to home teams throughout the Southwest. And tonight it's right after the game on Fox Sports Net. Two in scoring position for Gary Sheffield. Sheffield is one for three. If Sheffield caught Mahomes' ball, that would have been third out of the eighth inning. And only Oh, what a score. No one not a score. And it would be right now the eight to five with two men out. Although Jerry Land got something warmed up a little soon. That ball that he let drop in might be a big win. Back up the middle, through for a base hit. Boca Chica scores, as does Green, and the lead is down to five. It's 12-7. Well, you asked the question last half inning. Dodgers have to be wondering how the Rangers are 21 and 40. <laughs> Maybe getting an answer. That ball was way outside. And Sheffield yanked it up the middle for a base hit. A Rod was playing him to pull. But it's tough to pull that pitch into the hole. But he still did pull it to the left of second base, but there was no one there. Four shot up the middle, even though that ball was not hit hard at all. Adrian Beltre at a right center field with room Porter. And there finally is the first out of the eighth inning. Center field number nine. The Dodgers have Our countered case. the Rangers four Press runs up. in the top half of the eighth with four runs in the bottom of the eighth. They did it. Before there was an out registered. Now finally the first out. Leon at 
first with one out. Marquise Grissom, the hitter. There's five straight hits to start the eighth inning. with a high pop into right field and Sierra squeezes it and there are two outs. Shortstop number three Alex Cora. And Jerry Naren out of the Ranger bullpen. Gonna throw got up just a couple of batters ago not many pitches ago it doesn't need much time to get ready. Alex Cora, the shortstop, the hitter. Naren makes the call for Venafro to replace Mahomes here. Mahomes gives up four runs so far charged to him on six hits. 12-7, Texas trying to hold on, a pitching change. The Rangers have 12 runs on 15 hits. The Dodgers have seven runs on 13 hits now. It's an interesting look. Crowd of 27,431 watching the Rangers and the Dodgers. And the Rangers go to their third pitcher of the night and throws from the side. Mike Venafro. This will be Mike's sixth appearance in the last eight games. His ERA at 392, opponents average at 250. Jerry going with a left handed pitcher right here to face Cora, who's a left hand hitter. And Olsen, the pitcher, is the next hitter. And the only players left on the bench are Hanson and Tom Goodwin. Two left hand hitters, so Jerry knows that the next two hitters will be left hand hitters, and so that's why Mike Benefro is in the ballgame. When Pat Mahomes is out of there. And on two outs. Outside ball one. Cora, the eighth Dodger to hit in the eighth inning. to start the inning four runs across against Mahomes only got a couple of outs and now Vinifero tries to nail down the third out of the eighth inning right back to the mound Vinifero could run there himself he flips to Palmero and that'll do it for the Dodgers in the eighth though they close the gap by four the lead is down to five headed to the ninth Rocky with a chance at a three home run game when we come back Texas leads Los Angeles 12 7. We go to the ninth inning here at Dodger Stadium in LA. After you could join us tonight here on Fox Sports Net as the Rangers try to take game one of this three game series. Rafael Palmero to lead it off in the Brazos Mutual Fund's brilliant replays. It was Rafi in his first at bat to left center field, a home run. And then later, off Dodger starter Luke Prokopek in the fifth inning. His second homer of the game, 17th of the year, the Brazos Mutual Fund's brilliant replays. And now Rafi has a chance for a three home run game. Have to face a veteran lefty out of the Dodger bullpen. Jesse Orozco gets the call. Jesse Orozco, boy, has he been around for a long time. He's been a good pitcher for a long time. Very solid. 22nd big league season. He's been in six different clubs, 141 major league saves. 84 and 75 record all time major league leader in games pitched 1102 games. That's some longevity. It's going pretty well 88 miles an hour drops down from that little bit of a sidearm style makes him over the years very tough against left hand hitters drop down and drop that slider on the outside corner. Ahead of Rafi here, no balls and two strikes. 
Yuram Bukachika stays in the game at second base. He came in to pinch run for Gresselonic, who left with a sprained ankle. Fouled at the plate. Triple-A affiliate, the Oklahoma Redhawks winners tonight, 8-5. to five. Francisco Cordero got his fifth save. Cordero has been pitching very well in his injury rehab assignment. May not be that long before Cordero makes it back. Ricky Lede went one for four, played in left field, and it won't be long before Lede is back with the Rangers, especially with the injury to Rusty. You know how severe the strained left hamstring is, but it means that Rusty has to go on the disabled list. The day could be here very quickly. Justin Thompson and Scott Sheldon passing the time in the Ranger dugout. <laughs> There's the one two to Rafi. Great adjustment and he gets the base hit. Third hit of the game. A lot of time to Third think. Third number number 11. Three hour ball game. Ken Caminetti. And the leadoff man on for the Rangers. There's Caminetti looking for his first hit. Sheldon looking good. You can see through that thing. Sure if he punched holes in there or not. If he, if he can, his eyes have separated by about four inches. <laughs> he, can, he has peripheral vision, but not straight ahead. Justin Thompson's working on something of his own next to him. Pudge looking on. They're hard at work in there. Oh, the old Kenny Rogers tearing up a baseball. There's a strikeout. Caminetti is the first out. Last year, Kenny Rogers dissected a baseball during a game. The bottle, trying to determine whether the ball was indeed juiced. Frank Calonato. Scott's into it, that's for sure. What you'd love to see is right while he gets that in place, have Jerry Nerenbeek go, Scott, <laughs> Scott, I want you to hit. Yeah, tap see him how, on the shoulder. See how quickly he rips those things <laughs> off. Who, me? <laughs> Catalanato, a couple of hits tonight. He's two for four. One ball, one strike. Rangers now with 16 hits tonight. Japanese for a strike one and two. It's a strikeout for the second out in the ninth inning. Two straight strikeouts for Orozco. Time for the Pennzoil protection play of the game. This was Bo Porter at the point back in the sixth inning, and an outfielder has to protect himself going into the wall. There is some padding to provide some protection for Marquise Grissom, but a loud crash. It's a triple for Bo Porter. Pennzoil protection under the toughest driving conditions. 
Order with three runs scored tonight. To one and zero. With a single and a triple, plus he walked and scored in the eighth inning. It's two and zero. Oh. Rangers and Dodgers again tomorrow night. Mike Judd against Darren Dryford. It's 3-0 to Bo. Rangers have not had many opportunities to have this kind of late inning fun. There's a strike three and one. In the bottom of the ninth, the Dodgers do to have the eight nine and one hitters and the pinch hitter for the pitcher probably Dave Hansen Tim Bogar and Paul LaDuca round ball shortstop Cora to Boca Chica for the force on Palmero coming down we go to the bottom of the ninth inning at Dodgers Stadium the Rangers are three outs away from victory. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Net has been brought to you by Pennzoil protection under the toughest driving conditions. Bottom of the ninth inning. It is a mess in that Ranger dugout. They're hard at work. They know the game's almost over. They got to get it done quickly. Time running out. The unraveling process continues for Justin Thompson. Think of how much mileage Scott Sheldon has got out of that one baseball wrapper on the eyes. It's been <laughs> now about a half an hour, two innings. Doesn't take much to amuse little children. <laughs> but they're having fun, and when it's 12 to 7, you got a lead, that's time to have fun. Hasn't been much fun for the Rangers this year. You get a chance, take advantage of it. Dave Hansen. Pinch hitter facing Vinifro. Tim Bogar and Paul LaDuca do up. Rangers have a couple of right handers throwing in the bullpen. This is one thing you won't see very often a left hand hitter pinch hitting and facing a left hand pitcher. You see it more often in the National League. The pitcher spot up. Inning, the Dodgers got four runs and five hits to start the inning. Aaron Oliver started for Texas, went six innings, gave up three runs on seven hits, no walks, and two strikeouts. Oliver in position to get his fifth win against two losses. Pat Mahomes went an inning and two thirds, charged with four runs on six hits. Vinifero got the last out of the eighth. Tries for the first out of the ninth. For Los Angeles, Luke Prokopek started with five innings and gave up seven runs on ten hits. Rangers got to him for a couple of runs in the first, including a Palmero home run, a homer by Mike Young in the second, and it was a three run fourth. Strike three, see you later. One out in the ninth. Many left hand hitters are going to hit that pitch. Sidearm fastball at the knees, right near the outside corner. First baseman, number 18, Tim Bogar. Pretty nice pitch right there by Mike Benafro. Or Benafro, as he's called here in Los <laughs> Angeles. <laughs> When he was first called up by the Rangers, you'd hear 
public address announcers have some problems with the Vinifero name and here at Vinifero. You don't hear it very often, but since they don't see the Rangers much in a National League ballpark, he was announced as Mike Vinifero tonight. There are two outs here in the ninth. Gotcha. Coming up tonight on the Southwest Sports Report, 30 minutes of nightly sports news, completely dedicated to teams throughout the Southwest. Compact center flooding. Postponement of a WNBA game. Jerry Jones, new field of dreams. Shaq takes a shot at Don Nelson for extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews. Catch the Southwest Sports Report tonight after the game only on Fox Sports Net. One out away from the Southwest Sports Report. Can the ball be unraveled? Yes, it can by the end of this game. Victory in the Ranger dugout. High fives all around. Problem is, Justin's now raised a blister on his pitching hand. He's not going to be able to throw for another two weeks. He was up against the time limit. And yep, he they, came through. They had their goal. And <laughs> seen a lot of high fiving for long home runs tonight, but that's the first time we've seen one for that. in the ninth. And now Vinifero a strike away from closing the door on the Dodgers. Dodgers try to go to two and two in interleague play. A couple of one run losses to the Astros over the weekend. A lopsided 16 to four win on Saturday. Double figures tonight a 12 seven lead for Texas. Play for Benefro, the snow cone grab, and on to first. He got him. One, two, three. Go the Dodgers in the ninth inning. As Benefro retires all five hitters, he says, and now he's all around for a different reason. Rafael Palmero, two home runs, two of the four hit by the Rangers tonight. Pudge Rodriguez has homered in four straight games, and Mike Young, who went to Bishop Ahmad High School here in Los Angeles, cracks a home run in his first at bat back home. It's Pudge and the Rangers, winners over the Dodgers 12-7, using a 16-hit attack to do it as Texas takes game one of this three-game interleague series. For Tom Grieve and our entire crew, Bill Jones saying goodnight from L.A. Once again, the final 12-7 Texas. Join us tomorrow night at 9 on KDFI 27 in Dallas when the Rangers and Dodgers meet again. The next telecast on Fox Sports Net. Wednesday night, the series wrap-up from Dodger Stadium. Coming up, the Southwest Sports Report next on Fox Sports Sports Net.